All right, back at it. Hopefully you had time to take a look at what the question says. Um, this question doesn't appear too frequently on exam P, but I have seen questions like this in related study materials, uh, specifically ASM, the study manual for exam P there. They come up with uh, several examples regarding this type of question. It is useful to know if you know how to do it. Um, because you can tackle a problem pretty quickly if you understand uh, well how to how to approach it. So let's write down the important details. First off is I have a random variable. I'm going to call it n. The n is a discrete random variable. It's distributed with the Poisson distribution. So n is the number of of workplace. Uh, accidents occurring on a given day. Okay. Um, so again, we're given a that it's Poisson with mean lamina, right? So I'm going to write it, uh, I'm just going to write this way actually because the question also, lambda is also a random variable. So the way to think about this, the proper way to think about this is that we have a probability, um, well mass function actually, right, because it's discrete. So PMF uh, of n given lambda. So uh, n given lambda is equal to just your typical Poisson distribution. So e to the negative lambda, lambda to the n, over n factorial. So first thing I'm going to do, before I actually answer the question, is I'm just going to go with the general way to approach it, okay? Well, after I write down the details. We're not done with the details, right? So as I mentioned, lambda also is a random variable. So lambda, lambda is distributed uniform, uniform uh, with endpoints. Uh, and I believe it's a closed interval. It doesn't actually matter, but we're going to include a zero to three, right? So we can write down the PDF, the density function for lambda, right? We can write this as F of lambda of lambda is equal to uh, one third, right? Where lambda is in this interval. All right, now we're ready to, we have this set up, uh, we have the, the given information, and now we're ready to actually try to attack this problem, um, as I mentioned, just in general first. So we're asked for the probability that there's one uh, accident, right? The probability that n is one. So the number of accidents occurring on a given day is one. That's what we're asked for, but I want to just write it down in general to give you an idea of how this should work. So what I can say here is, um, what I can say is that if I just wanted, what if I just wanted the distribution of n, right, not the conditional, this is conditional. This is the conditional distribution. That should make sense to you because we don't know, I mean, what this is going to be. It depends on, it depends on lambda. So it's, so given lambda takes on a specific value, right? So what if I just wanted though, what if I wanted just say P of N, right? This is the unconditional distribution of the number of workplace accidents occurring on a given day. What if I wanted this? Okay, well, this right here, um, if you think about this uh, for a second here, this, how do I get a marginal distribution? So I can think of this as the marginal distribution uh, PDF of n. One way to get the marginal distribution is to integrate the joint distribution. So what I mean is, what if I integrate, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use capital T, the joint distribution of n and lambda, okay, uh, n and lambda. How do I get the marginal distribution from the joint distribution? If this is of n, I need to integrate all over 
the lambdas. So I'm going to integrate over all lambdas. Lambda goes from 0 to 3. I need to basically get rid of lambda. Integrate all the lambdas out of there. That will give me this the uncondition unconditional uh, marginal distribution of n. This is the idea. Now, how does this even help me? Well, this helps me because I know something about this. This piece right here, what is this piece equal to? Use the definition of uh, conditional distribution. So by definition, this right here uh, is equal to the following, right? This is equal to the conditional distribution, okay, lambda, uh, n given lambda times, times, f of lambda. So this is what's helpful. This is what's helpful right here is because I have both of these pieces. I have this and I have this. I have the uh, marginal density of lambda, and I also have the conditional mass function for number of workplace in injuries. So we pretty much have it. Uh, I'm just going to fill these pieces in. So now this is equal to the integral from 0 to 3 okay, of uh, e to the negative lambda, uh, lambda to the n over n factorial times 1 third d lambda. So hopefully you can see I have the original conditional here. And I have my uh, marginal distribution uh, f of lambda here, right? So we pretty much have everything. This would be this would be my uh, unconditional marginal density, well, marginal I guess mass function, the probability mass function uh, of n, okay? And they could ask me anything now. They could say, you know, what's the probability that n is less than five, less than equal to five, greater than or equal to five? Specifically, they want the probability that the number of workplace injuries is, is one. So let's answer that question now. But this is a general form, and hopefully you can see where it comes from now. So let me come up here. Um, we need to give some room. Okay, so let me get rid of this. We have everything. I'm just going to take it from here and just evaluate this. All right, so we want... What are we after? We want the following. The question says we want to find want to find p n of 1. Well, I have it. I'm going to just plug in 1 here. So p n of 1 is equal to the integral from 0 to 3. Replace n with 1. This gives me, I'm going to bring the 1 third out. So this is 1 third uh, e to the negative lambda times lambda d lambda. Now, if you're like me, and when I looked at this problem late last night, I got all the way right here, and I almost did something really silly, extremely silly, because I'm very accustomed to dealing with this type of integral. <laughs> but you have to remember here for a second that I'm integrating with respect to lambda. Do not try to do, um, do not try to keep lambda as a constant or something weird, like I was thinking at first. Or something. I don't know why I was thinking that. Stupid. Okay, we're integrating with respect to lambda. So you should be saying to yourself, how do I integrate something like this? Well, the integrand is a product, integration by parts. So we need to use integration by parts. Always use, in my opinion, what I call the tabular method. It's not just what I call it, actually. It's pretty much convention to call it that. So I personally always do this sort of thing. Okay, I have my u and I have my dv. Okay, my u is lambda and then 1 and then 0. My dv is e to the negative lambda, uh, negative e to the negative lambda, and e to the negative lambda. Only thing I need to remember here is to alternate signs. So I need to go plus, minus, plus. So I need to go plus, minus, and I end right there. And I'll just copy that down. And I'm pretty much good to go. So this is equal to, this is equal to, uh, the one third can come out, just a constant. So one third times quantity 
negative lambda e to the negative lambda minus e to the negative lambda going from zero to three. So easy peasy, right? Plug in the endpoints. We're good to go. So this is equal to one third. And then I have negative three e to the negative lambda minus, uh, sorry, e to the negative three negative, uh, minus e to the negative three. And then minus, then I plug in uh, zero first, I get zero, then I plug it in here, and I get minus one. Rewriting this, this is one third. Uh, inside this quantity here, this is gonna be one minus four e to the negative three. And this is approximately what? 0 0.267, that is my answer. So this answers the question, and hopefully this gives you an idea better how to attack a question like this, because these questions where I have a, a density function that depends, its parameter depends on something else, they can ask something about variance, which you use uh, the law of total variance, which may look more example of that. They can also ask about expectation, which I use the double expectation formula, or they can ask me about a probability. So that covers all the bases pretty much. Um, and for the probability case, we went over that. So hopefully you understand the logic there. And uh, stay tuned for next time. Comment below.